You will never guess who I've been speaking to. Oh, who is this now? Okay, do you know who Chris Riley is? Mm, I can't say I do. Okay, I didn't think you did. But I'll tell you who does. Scott Disick, you know, from Keeping Up Kardashians. Oh, yeah, my mate Scott, I know. Yeah, so he, your mate, <laughs> he's had a reading yeah. from him and he said it is unreal. Okay, it's, sounds a bit far-fetched if you ask me. Yeah, I know you don't really, like, believe in it, but I do, so I think I am going to go and see him. You carry on, babe. You carry on. You're your own woman. You do what you like. <laughs> Let me try it and persuade you then. Okay, he's had 30,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot in only six months. So if that's not good, then I don't know what is. 30,000 five-star reviews. That's, that's pretty yeah. good. So what's the deal then? Okay, so the deal is for just £10, you get a 10-minute reading. Oh, and looky here. I just found his Instagram. His at is Chris Riley Psychic. You've got to be over 18 and all calls are recorded and need the bill payers' permission. But what is he going to tell me, which I don't know? I don't know, but I just, I want to do it. So I'm booking him in. Oh, you tell us we're going to be a billionaire in a couple of years' time. Oh, yeah. Okay, so call 0330-201-9605 and use the code Liam Millie for a £10 reading or head to chrisreillypsychic.com for more info. Riley is spelled R-I-L-E-Y. Hello and welcome back to the Liam and Millie podcast. I said the, the Liam and Millie podcast, didn't I? I wouldn't go out drinking like, and drink wine all night though. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Liam Reedon and I'm accompanied with my girlfriend, Millie Court. Hey guys, welcome back. This week we are separate once again. I'm in Wales and Millie is in London, aren't you, babe? I am, yes. And I would like to just point out as well, last time when we were separate and in our separate rooms, made a comment that Liam's background was actually very grey, but it seems to me here, babe, you've had a couple of changes. Yeah, remember the show 30 Minute Makeover? We've had one of them. Um, we've got a throw, <laughs> we've got a little blue lamp behind me. Um, I brought the shelf a bit lower, so you can see oh, my lovely shelf. ornaments. Good. Um, I got some tree thing, which we, we use for Christmas, but I've actually got a new tree on the way, well, it's got delivered today like a plant tree thing to go in the corner there. Love and that. I think you almost hit them, but maybe more a couple of finishing touches, but it's going to be looking perfect then. Anyway, yeah. don't forget to follow us on socials at Liam and Millie Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. And you can email us telling us whatever you like, any stories, any funny things that are happening in your life right now at Liam and Millie at sonymusic.com. We'd absolutely love to hear from you guys. What have we been up to this week then? What has been on the agenda? It's Tuesday today. Last week, we I spent the week in London um, with yourself. We went out on the weekend. We had a few heavy ones on the uh, the old pop. When do we and, not, uh, to be honest? But now I'm, I'm going teetotal for a little while, um, for a couple of days. A couple <laughs> um, of days? Yeah, but we had we had a mixture of work and pleasure, or work and leisure, I don't know which one it is. Um, <laughs> and... Some of the words required us to drink alcohol, so um, yeah, you know, I feel like quite a lot of our jobs require us to drink alcohol. We always so basically we got invited to this like Disney event, and it was this whole like concept of like Mickey Mouse isn't just for kids; like adults can love it too. And we went to this Mickey Mouse themed party in London. And I think me and Liam was like, oh, you know, we'll just go and see what the vibe is. It was so good. Who was that guy that was performing? It was Anderson Pack. Um, yeah. And what else? That we we met we met this uh, nice couple from New Zealand, and uh, <laughs> they both said they're from New Zealand, and uh, they were chatting to us. And uh, when they said where they're from, Millie was like, oh my god, I love the Aussie accent. Um, <laughs> we're actually going to Australia for Christmas and New Year. And they looked at me, and I looked at them. And they were like, we're from New Zealand, um, which they had already said. I mean, they said, like, that's, in yeah. that's in Australia, isn't it? <laughs> and no, it's absolutely not in Australia. And they looked at you like an idiot. Then. I'm not good um, at geography, okay? Like, I didn't take it as a subject because I just know I'm not good at it. And they do sound very similar. And God. They like, sound a bit similar. Yeah, they sound they a little bit do. similar. They do. Like, it's yeah, but, like when people say that 
I don't know. What do they say? <laughs> Any other accents say. that sound similar? Well, they think people from like America think like all European European people are the same, or all British people are the same, or sound yeah. the same, which obviously they don't. But it's not too far off, me. though, is it? Really, it wasn't too it's far not, off. They, I think like, they're neighboring countries. Yeah, and it's not like me saying I sound like a a Scottish person where it's like completely different. Like it is similar and you can see where my mistake comes from. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. Okay. I think okay. they were actually <laughs> offended though. They were like, they didn't like that. They they wasn't happy no, with me. Like they didn't that. care. They didn't care. Um <laughs> and we were we were active last week. We were we were hitting the runs. He knows that I don't like to exercise. Like he's I've tried it. I've, I've yeah, but you it. love it when you do it. It's I don't. I, where are you? Where are you getting this from? I enjoyed it so much that all I had to do was a light jog and somehow sprain my ankle from going on a light jog. I didn't even fall over. Not only did I sprain my ankle this week, but another really awful thing happened to me. I can't quite believe has happened. Um, Liam, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to relate, but I found my first grey hair. Oh, yeah. yes. And it wasn't just well, it one. Wasn't, it wasn't a grey hair. It was a cluster. It was about six grey hairs. Yeah. Get Are old, you babe. actually kidding me right now? Yeah, because you haven't had the, like, the grey hairs coloured. You've you've hidden the wrinkles with all the Botox. Um, you need to sort the grey hairs out now. Well, that's <laughs> that, I can't fix that. I, I can bleach my hair and dye it and that but it's still always just gonna keep coming back like well, I, I don't I know got, I got like one on the side but that's, that's it for, for, for a minute that's, that's it for a minute I don't know what's <laughs> like I don't know what a normal age is to start getting getting grey hair well it's completely natural you're getting older and you know I think you will you'll rock the grey look further on the line you know if we might want to keep it coloured Will your pubes start turning grey soon? What's going to happen <laughs> in that one? You're going to have like little grey pubes on your bum hole? <laughs> uh, would you Would you like that or? Um, <laughs> no, I feel like I'm... You might be you able know, to see them less. I feel like I'm just doing bits of the granny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the fuck, babe? Doing I would, bits I of the I'd... granny? <laughs> Wouldn't mind that. Yeah. <laughs> Someone actually commented the other day that I was like really punching, and I just feel like as I'm getting older, I'm getting worse, and then like you're getting fitter. So you're just going to leave me for like a sexy, <laughs> younger version of me. I know. I liked it when I was younger because you were a bit older than me because you were in your prime then. Now it's just going downhill for you, and I'm just getting better and better, and you're just going worse and worse. Just like, not the response that I wanted. What's going to happen in five years' time? Like you're going to be some dusty old woman. <laughs> you like an older one, don't joking. lie. I do, I do. I, I don't know. You're gonna look fit, babe. You'll fit. You're beautiful anyway, and you're gonna get more beautiful. I'm 28. This in two months. Wow, I got a 28 year old girlfriend. Crazy. Two two years away from 30, but they do say 30 is the best years of your life. So I'm not sure whether I'm like too bothered about that. Dirty and 30. Is that what it is? 30 and dirty or flirty? 30 and flirty. Better if I can not be flirty, mate. <laughs> yeah. When when I'm 30, like that's when we'll start doing like all the nice, really like wholesome stuff, like having kids and stuff. No, I got to wait till I'm 30, which is in five no. years' time. <laughs> I got five I've, years. I'm not waiting for five years. I'm actually not. What do you I'm mean? Gonna, I'm, I'm not going to be ready. I'm going to be 33. To be fair, I am a party girl, aren't I? So it's like... I'm not ready to have kids yet anyway. Like I'm I'm not saying I want them anytime soon. But yeah, maybe five years actually. That sounds quite good. Right. What was the question of the week then this week? So the question of the week this week is top tips for clearing your head. Have you got any top tips? My top tips. So I'm someone who is a happy person and I tend to be happy more often than not. But sometimes I do have down days and I do feel I do get down. Some nice things get on top of me. And fitness or going for a long walk is majorly important for me. Um, that's why I'm so hot on my like my fitness and my health and stuff. Just because I want to look good, but I also want to feel good. And whenever I'm feeling a bit shitty, that is what helps. Uh, I might not fix it, but it definitely helps. Just doing any form of fitness? Anything. Like, you know, run, hiking, going down by the beach, stripping off my clothes and running in the sea and having a swim in the freezing cold sea 
And uh, yeah, but spending t- spending time with friends and family and my girlfriend as well. Can't forget. That <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. I'm the last <laughs> one out of that, by the way, guys. <laughs> what, the <laughs> f- what? What were you, babe? What What do you do? Get drunk. If you can see no. <laughs> you can see actually how different me and Liam are because if I stripped off my clothes and ran in the sea, I think that would put me in a worse mood actually. Um, <laughs> All the fish would have a hard on. Yeah. He actually did make me do that once. And it was like around, was it around Christmas time when we went and ran in the sea in Wales? It was really yeah, cold. It was like, it was, it, was. The, it was in the new year. Yeah, it was, it was winter anyway. And honestly, I've never done that before in my life. Don't know where, whether I will again, but. Yes, you will. I feel like for me, if I need to clear my head, genuinely, it's just, I, I need alone time. I need time away from everyone and like my phone I just need to like have time to think and process things maybe have like a little cry sometimes I actually put on sad movies just so I could have a cry because I feel better afterwards because I feel like I don't cry as much I don't let myself cry over things like I should no you don't you don't you don't cry much I'm Definitely the cry uh, in this relationship. Yeah, Liam um, cries more than me. <laughs> You're not afraid to show your emotions, and I love I love that about you. I'd like to know what our listeners have said, like how they clear their head, because maybe I need some tips and tricks on what to do. Yeah, so I jumped on our Liam and Millie Instagram last night and asked you, lovely people, what do you do to clear your head? And a few of you have uh, wrote in. And Courtney says, cleaning your living space. I stand by a tidy home, tidy mind. I like <gasps> that. That's true. Nothing uh, like what gets me down sometimes, messy bedroom. Um, or when mm. I'm, because I'm back and forth London quite a lot. I'm usually living up in my car. That gives me like, stresses me out. If I clear that out, I feel good about myself. Another one that I can't relate to. And just messy. <laughs> I can live and rot in my own mess. Oh, I, no, no, no. This is more like me. I'm I'm Amy. Well, I'm not actually Amy. Amy is someone different. But I sit on my drive in the car, music on with Capri's chocolate buttons. Oh, yeah. But then you would just fall asleep behind the wheel, wouldn't you? No, it's like when I'm in the car, got the music blaring, that is one of my favourite times of the day. Yeah, singing out Adele or Justin Bieber. Yeah, Adele. Like, guys, clearing my head putting on like sad music like I love I type in on my Apple like playlist sad songs or like heartbreak songs even though I've literally got a boyfriend and I'm not heartbroken but like (laughs) it's just another reason to like let out some tears yeah and people so many people are saying in the comments that Millie is exactly like Adele and she looks like her and sounds like her yeah how weird is that definitely can't fucking sing like her but (laughs) yeah I see the similarities I think he's in certain, you know, when I do my hair certain ways. I don't know. I think we're maybe from around the same area. I didn't think she was Essex, but maybe she is. Um, okay, to finish us off, we have Ellie and Fizz both wrote journaling before bed. And I can agree with that as well because I'm a bit of a journaler, yeah, aren't I, Mill? I got into that recently. It was after Love Island though, wasn't it? Yeah, like early 2022, started journaling. But all this, all this got me thinking about um, sort of the the public pressures of you know being in the the public eye and wanting to clear your head sometimes and obviously we heard some awful news about the passing of Liam Payne which is horrific Mm. um very very sad it was emotional reading the other day only hearing about that I just couldn't can't quite wrap my head around it to be honest it was um Mm. a big shock and I feel like it, it is like that when anyone that is so big in the public eye and you just always think they're going to live forever or like live as long yeah. as, as you live, especially because when we yeah. were younger, that he was also, they were also really young in, in one direction. Yeah. And, you know, you, you just always expect that life, you're going to grow old and then these tragic mm. things happen and it's just, you can't wrap your head around it. And I've always been a massive fan of, of like One Direction. Went to see yeah. them at the um, X Factor live tour when they were actually on X Factor as well. Did I ever tell you that? Yeah, you said you touched all of their hands apart from Harry's. Yeah, everyone. I had. I was at the end and I had my hand out and they were running down the thing and they all touched my hand. Yeah, yeah apart from uh, Harry. Um, but I, I was I was a one D fan. Like 
and I sort of followed all the careers afterwards then. But um, so yeah, it's absolutely horrific what's happened. Um, I just send all love to his family, his son, and uh, yeah, mm. anyone who's close yeah, to him. Yeah, definitely. Sending a lot of love to everyone who needs it right now. Um, but I think it's just important to talk about those subjects. I think that, you know, he was in the public eye and dealing with probably a lot of pressure. I know that we can absolutely not relate in the sense of his scale at all. He's literally was part of One Direction, one of the biggest boy bands in the world, I would say. Like yeah. the whole world knows yeah. who Liam Payne is. 100%. And yeah. it's crazy, isn't it? I think that we can only touch on it a little bit, but like we've sort of had like a little smidge of what it's like to be in the media and the public pressures of that. And it, even we've found that hard. So like you just can't even imagine how anyone who is, you know, an A-list or we're literally Z-listers and whatever, but like they are a A-list celebrities. They must struggle a lot. And I think it's important to talk about the struggles um, and like m mental health, especially, you know, men's mental health as well. I think it's it's really nice that we're talking about that more now as well. Oh, of course, like male, female, you know, everyone's mental health is mm. important. I think you never really, you never really know what someone is going through. You think, how, how do people deal with it? Like, how do people in the public eye deal with those pressures of the media? Like from my own experience, I faced my own sort of struggles coming off Love Island. Um, like at the time, it was crazy. You know, it's, it's the biggest show in the UK. Well, I think at the time it was the biggest show in the UK and it's watched all around the world. So, you know, I went in as Liam the Bricky, you know, yeah. and knowing a few people and then come off and like all these people knew who, who we were. And such a drastic change, isn't it? Yeah, like overnight change like that. And for me, I'm... The criticism, like, about my appearance, I wasn't too bothered. I didn't, like, I, mean, I say I'm quite a self-conscious guy, but not, like, that didn't really bother me so much. It was the, how I was being perceived. Yeah. Um, Like, I did a certain thing on Love Island, you know, I kissed someone else during Castle and More. People hated me for that. They thought I was, like, this scumbag, cheater, like a womanizer, like, sort of, like, random stuff. Um, And... Obviously, on Love Island, that happened halfway point. And then four weeks, we had another four weeks there together and sort of redeemed myself and we went on to win. I still had people, you know, slated me and stuff for what I did. But then afterwards, then, like certain things, I remember, like, you did a TikTok of me. I came out in the bathroom and you you, fright, you shouted and frightened me. Mm. And I, like, it scared me. And I was, like, angry for, like, five seconds. Punched, I was, like, yeah. No, like, it was like a bag on the floor and I kicked the bag. I was like, F off. And, like, and just, like, but funny, and then people are caught like you. You put on TikTok, people are commenting saying that's very triggering. You know, he's giving like um, abusive, control, uh, aggressive vibe and stuff. And I'm, you know, I'm not like that at all. I'm far from it. Yeah. Um, and people are like, I don't know, just uh, I was never good enough to be with you. Um, it felt like you know, it just it was just like sort. I was like, I was just mm. Millie, It was Millie Grace, Millie Court, and I just the boyfriend. Um, you know, and everyone said, oh, you, you know, you're punching, you're punching every day, which is fine. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm punching, but like every day when someone's they like saying you're not good enough and stuff, I don't know. It's just, but obviously I'm so grateful for the, the life which we've got now, um, since coming off the back of the show, mm. it's just like my own experience. Like people online think they know you, they think you know your life and they, they paint you to be the certain person and some of the headlines on the articles and stuff, um, what they write is just absolute nonsense a lot of the time. Sometimes they write nice stuff. A lot of the time they write nonsense. Um, mm -hmm. And people believe it. You know, you see an article, someone reads it, they believe it straight away. You know, they, yeah. they don't even look in, you know, they see the headline. Oh, so-and-so's that's you know, so-and-so's doing this it. or they've done that. And they look inside. They don't even bother to look inside. And it's just false anyway. It's not, it's not true. So, I mean, that's um, what the power of media is, isn't it? It can completely change people's opinions of you of of anyone really like however they decide they want to write that story will just completely control the narrative and yeah. sometimes it's just not even true and i think that's probably hard for someone to deal with you know if there was false narratives going around about you and then you had to somehow defend yourself or whatever like 
it's not something that we ever prepared ourselves for as well. You know, as we said, it's a, an, it was an overnight change and we didn't know what to expect. Like we're so, so grateful of the opportunity and we understand how like privileged that we are now and like we have all these amazing opportunities and I, I wouldn't change it for the world. But um, I just think that social media is really toxic sometimes for our mental health for anyone really who is active on social media it's a platform where people can troll like troll you and you know you see in schools like now bullying is taking place on social media and Mm. you not only are you getting bullied if you might get bullied at school but you now come home and it's your like private time and the time the space where you should be with your family and you know doing doing whatever you want you can now be getting bullied in your private time as well and social media is a a really scary place to be sometimes yeah do you agree 100 percent, 100 percent. and like i said it gives people that platform then to abuse or troll or bully um Mm. but yeah if you are on a a presence on social media just realize it's not real like most of the time you know you can try a lot of people try and show the real side on there um Mm. A lot of time it's the finished product, you know, it's, everyone shows the perfect side, the perfect parts of their life. Not many people show the, the shit parts of their life, the negative side. Yeah. Um, and then you're online, you're comparing yourself and, you know, I'm just glad when I was a kid, social media was a thing, but not very big. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we had the childhood of like, <laughs> was he Pixo and like MSN? Like, it yeah. was so innocent, wasn't it? But even that had its uh, issues. People would still do yeah. stuff on there. Slightly, but now yeah. it's like, it's all about, you know, you're comparing yourself to others. Mm. Um, you know, you're comparing yourself on the sofa to someone's best version of yourself on social media. You know, so you're never going to feel good about yourself if you if you do that. So um, just remember, mm. it's not real. Most You know, most of the time it's not real. Don't compare. I think I that's a, as well another reason why we just kind of wanted to touch up on this subject and sort of have like an episode where we just kind of are like really real with you guys because so far it's been very much like mine and Liam's normal, like our relationship is very much based on banter and winding each other up and like laughs, but it isn't always like that for us. Like there's been times when me and Liam have been like, I remember like vividly we were going to like Dublin or something and like we did this press interview and it was one of the first times that we kind of like were seen together after our breakup and stuff and and then like the comments were so horrible and I just remember just like burst out crying like hiding in the bathroom and like finding it so difficult because I don't know sometimes I don't really find it hard to talk about it but I do feel a lot of like pressure on social media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, babe. I don't really know why I'm crying. I don't want it to be like, oh, sob story and stuff for us at all. But like, I feel like I do struggle, like, as well, like, with like my weight and things. Like, I think as a woman, I feel a lot of pressure to like look perfect. And- when people will comment on my looks and stuff or like my relationship, which is so important to me. No, it's challenging. It's challenging. Yeah, like social media changes people's views and stuff. I don't know. I suppose that, Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to have the negative comments, but, you know, with, you know, 10 negative comments, you've got 90 lovely comments of lovely people. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, naturally... You will just look at the negative ones and pick yeah. those out and and think they are the correct ones, um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's life. You know, you're not gonna please everyone. You're not gonna no, um, no, no everyone's gonna think you're beautiful. No, everyone's gonna think you're fun and a nice person. Like people are gonna criticize. Um, it's just when you get them criticism, you know, you see it and you know you're reading it, then you you're doubting yourself. Um, similar to me, that's why I never you know I struggle to show my personality. Um, since coming off Love yeah. Island and show who I am because I just thought oh what if people think I'm a dickhead or you know think I'm cringe or weird or and I was thinking for so mm. long I held back off showing who I am and I think that's 
one of the big reasons I want to start a podcast so yeah. we can show different sides of us and not just you know a photo on Instagram and and whatnot show our different sides and our fun side and our silly side and and our emotional side like you're just showing there um yeah it's because you, know, you know people will say this is what we've signed up for essentially isn't it is we do have have that it's our job really to show our whole personality like every part of us and on yeah on Instagram I suppose like you said like people have people just show the good stuff but it's you know it's not all, it's not all good like for, for everyone who has social media and yeah it's a bit scary sort of being vulnerable all the time and opening up like your full self to like the whole of the UK and and thinking oh, I might be showing this side of me that I wouldn't like normally show and then and then bound to like get someone write something about it and it's just like you know, it can kind of like knocks you knocks you down like little by little, doesn't it? But yeah. it also does make you stronger in the long run, I suppose. Like I feel like we had so many messages like you did when when we broke up about you cheating on me, like supposedly, obviously, like you had all of that trolling. I had trolling when I got back with you because everyone thought I was a, like a t- for getting back with the guy who supposedly cheated on me and I feel like we've been so like aimed at sometimes and in the press like for things that now I know I've just cried then but like I do feel like I'm stronger to it now <laughs> I just want to say that like for all of those who have been commenting like such nice comments on our YouTube for like our podcast like we do see it with you know this is something that we're really excited about this podcast and like we are opening ourselves up a lot more and being a lot more vulnerable in this sense like so you guys can see more of us but every single person who's commented like such lovely comments like thank you so much we we do see you and means means the world um we're really, really grateful for all of you guys who keep tuning in every week. Um, so, we, yeah, we love to see it. Okay, so it's now time for one of our favourite parts of the week, and that is... This is so I thought you were going to learn a nice tune for that keyboard. Yeah, I haven't had time yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that that one, that one. Sorry, um, there will be a day when I actually play a bit of Ed Sheeran or something oh yeah that'll be the day <laughs> that'll be the day um okay the first listeners hotline is from Anne Marie and Ooh. basically says I'm I used to be a, a judge on The Voice I got a good song called 2002 shut up <laughs> Anne Marie yeah. her name is Anne Marie but not the Anne Marie you're thinking of hello Liam and Millie I would love it if you could share some of your advice on how you handle anxiety after drinking. Oh, gosh. (laughs) You seem so carefree and confident when talking about any of your past drinking experiences, and I think it's amazing. The way you can just laugh about it and look back on things like it's funny, like it's a funny memory. I get so anxious now that I think about being anxious before I even start drinking. It's so beyond frustrating when I just want to have a good time. So do you have any advice for those who really struggle with feeling anxious after a night out? Love you both. Anne-Marie, kiss, kiss. That's a tricky one. I do get anxiety very, very bad. Um, I know Millie does as well. Mm. What Millie will do is not think about it, whereas I will think about it. So we, sometimes we, yeah. we think about things differently. Like I block certain things out. Millie looks at them. I can't block certain things out. And that's the next day I will think about how much of a a weirdo I was the night before when I was really, really drunk. And all I can think about is just thinking, I hope the other person, which I was being, you know, chatting to or something, or just being, if I was in a group and I was just being loud and drunk and annoying, I hope they were really, really drunk and they don't remember much and they got the same anxiety. That makes sense? Yeah, it kind of almost Um, makes you feel better that if you're feeling like it, they're probably feeling like it too. So then you're both in the same situation. So why worry? Unless you you with a person who doesn't drink alcohol and then they saw how much yeah. of a fucking weed you are and they remember everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I do get that sort of anxiety and it is never gone and it probably will never go. But I just, slowly over the years, I, st- like, I don't, try not to care as much and I just stick to drinking just beer Usually I just drink I drink lager, 
Um, yeah, maybe I don't certain think... types of alcohol maybe make it worse or better. So maybe try and figure that out. Like, mm, yeah, you know, I can't drink wine. I cannot drink wine the next day. You I'm can because like, you drink it a lot, don't you? Well, I wouldn't go out and drink wine all night. I would. I drink vodka, like vodka lemonade, lime, or whatever. Um, but yeah. wine the next day. Yeah, there's certain drinks that I drink, and I might feel like really like sad and down I don't so much get anxiety I feel like I just get like a bit like low like I've let out so much energy and so much like endorphins mm. the night before and I'm like wow this best night ever and then the next day after I'm like oh oh I feel really like quite sad um <laughs> so yeah I get that guys yeah so yeah. you so on a high and then the next mm. day you just like so down um but my sort of advice is you know drink water have yeah. food before you go to bed, you know, get a bit of protein Food inside you. It does help. I think that's the key. Yeah. And then, yeah, the next day, I know it's hard, but try and get up and go for like a walk and clear your mm. head and just like, just do something. That's the only time I think I would agree with you on going out for a walk. But you still wouldn't though on a hangover because you like, you're at death's door and you just lay in bed all day. <laughs> yeah. But definitely don't not go out and don't drink and stuff because you're worrying about the next day. You know, yeah. You're worried about something that hasn't happened. So definitely don't do that. Still go out and have fun. We went out the other day after that Mickey Mouse party thing last week. And I woke up our babe. I need to text everyone who we were with and text them saying, oh, hey, great to yeah. see you last night. Told you had a good night. Apologies if I did anything wrong or said anything stupid. Like I do that to people. I don't know why. I should not care. But I was going to do it. Every time. Like, Liam's always texting someone afterwards going, oh, I'm really <laughs> sorry if I was like cringe last night. Like you don't have to say it. Yeah, I want them to reply saying, no, you're absolutely fine. Don't worry. That makes me feel better then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this next email is from Liana. Hey, Millie and Liam, I'm struggling with some jealousy towards my younger sister. She's been getting a lot of attention lately. Everyone seems to talk about how amazing she is. and It's making me feel a bit left out. I love her, but I can't help feeling overlooked. How do I deal with this? That's Aww. really sad. Yeah, it's common though. It's, it's very common. The same with like a, if you've got a best friend and the best friend is always the one that gets the attention. Mm. Same with like a bro, you know, two brothers. If the one brother is a, a bit better looking maybe or funnier or they get more attention. It is quite, it's, that's hard. I think it's important to realize actually how amazing you are. And yeah. your sister may be amazing, but you're also amazing too. And it, her being amazing doesn't make you any less amazing it just means that she's just had a few compliments recently and i'm yeah. about to give you a compliment right now i don't know what you look like or or who you are but you seem like a very very sweet girl and you're beautiful oh, too that's nice we're gonna end it for that one i think this episode um got a little bit deep on this one which we haven't done yet but gotta be real sometimes but I enjoyed that. That was good. Okay, guys, that is it for this week. Thank you so much for listening, watching, tuning in wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget that you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Liam and Millie Podcast. And if you want to be part of our listeners hotline, then you can email us at Liam and Millie at sonymusic.com. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you all for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.